Hello everyone. Welcome to another video in the series of EWS databases. My name is Supreet Bedi and I'm a database specialist solutions architect here at AWS. And today we will discuss about a very cool feature of Amazon Aurora, which is cross-account database fast clones. So you can create a clone of your Aurora cluster with just a click of a button. And you can also share your Aurora clones with another AWS account to take advantage of a variety of cross-account use cases. So with this introduction, let's get started. Let's quickly go through the agenda for today's session. We'll talk about Amazon Aurora features and its architecture. Next, we will dive deep into Amazon Aurora fast clone feature and see how cross-account cloning works. We'll discuss some of the use cases for the solution and also look into a quick demo to see how to share Aurora clones with another AWS account. With this, let's start with an introduction to Amazon Aurora. Amazon Aurora is a cloud-native enterprise database that gives you the performance and availability of the commercial databases. It is compatible with MySQL and PostgreSQL database engines, and it operates with the simplicity and cost-effectiveness of the open-source databases. So what this means is there is no cost to manage the database licenses. Amazon Aurora is a managed database service which comes with a very simple PSU code pricing model. Next, let's take a look at Aurora's shared distributed architecture. Amazon Aurora has a purpose-built, lock-structured, distributed storage subsystem. We have decoupled the storage subsystems from the compute layer which enables these components to scale independent of each other. The storage volumes are striped across hundreds of storage nodes and it is distributed across the three availability zones. The storage nodes, these are the boxes in the bottom part of this slide, and these are the machines with high processing power and locally attached SSDs. As part of the distributed storage, under the hood, we maintain six copies of your data, so with two copies in each availability zone. And the data is continuously packed up to the Amazon S3. The storage volume is segmented into 10 GB protection groups, and the database grows by adding more of these protection groups. So with Amazon Aurora, the storage scales automatically with the maximum size up to 128 terabyte per database instance. Amazon Aurora storage is also self-healing storage, which means the data blocks and the disks are continuously scanned for the errors and they are repaired automatically. Let's look into the fast cloning feature that Amazon Aurora provides. It's actually my favorite feature of Aurora because of so many use cases that it provides. Amazon Aurora fast cloning is a very quick and cost-effective way to create a copy of your production databases without any performance impact on your DB. The clone is ready to use in minutes even for the very large multi-terabyte scale databases. This feature uses copy and write protocol, which means when the clone is created, it uses the same cluster volume and the data as the source Aurora cluster. And the additional storage is allocated only when the data changes on either the source or the cloned Aurora cluster. So what you see here is the blue boxes. These are the data pages on the Aurora shared distributed storage system. And there are the pointers that are created to these data pages from the source and the clone cluster. So at this point, when the clone is freshly created, both the source and the clone cluster refers to the same data pages for the read operations. Let's see what happens when there are some write operations on either of these clusters. Consider an example when a write operation, for example, an update, which takes place on the source Aurora cluster, which affects the data page 4. So here, instead of modifying the original data page 4, 
Aurora will make a copy of it, which is the orange box here, and the source database will point to it. The clone cluster will still refer to the original database for. Similarly, when the write occurs on the clone cluster, which affects or changes the data pages 3, 4, and 5, which are the green boxes here, the new data pages will be created and the clone cluster will point to the new data pages 3, 4, and 5. The source and the clone database will still access the original data page 1 and 2 since those data pages were not changed. One advantage of the fast cloning feature is that you can create the clones and share it across the AWS accounts. The clone cluster, however, must be in the same region as the source Aurora cluster. Aurora integrates with AWS Resource Access Manager, which is AWS RAM, which enables you to securely share your DB clusters with other accounts for cloning. You can create up to 15 clones for the same source cluster. Many organizations usually maintain separate AWS accounts for production, development, and testing. And cross-account cloning can be used for a variety of use cases here. For example, you can create a clone of your production database in the dev test account and run a quick test to measure the impact of changes like adding a new index or schema changes or any parameter changes. Not everyone needs access to the production database, but the users may need a copy of database, for example, to run some ETL jobs. You can limit the access to your production AWS account and use the fast clones to run those past jobs in a separate non-production account. These ETL jobs ideally should not be run on the production databases to avoid the issues like database bloat or high replica lag due to long running queries. Another use case for Aurora clones is if you want to make any changes or perform any maintenance task on your production database, you can create a fast clone as your fallback plan. If something fails on your production database, you can switch to the clone cluster. Next, let's jump right into the demo and see how Aurora cross-account cloning works. Before we start the actual demo, let's look at the steps we are going to perform today. So in this demo, we will use an Aurora PostgreSQL database, which is encrypted using a KMS encryption key. So the first step is to share the KMS key with the target account. And then we will share the Aurora cluster using AWS Resource Access Manager service. We will then switch to the target account, accept the resource share, and then create a clone of the Aurora cluster. Next, we will verify the tables in our source and the target database. And we will do a quick test in our clone cluster. We will uh, add a new column and then verify the data. With this, let me switch to my console and we will see the things in action. So in my source account, I have um, an Aurora cluster named as EPG test. So the first step as part of this demo is we'll share the KMS key with the target AWS account. So I'll switch to um, the configuration tab here and look at my encryption key, which is the test encryption key here. And I'll go to the encryption key. It will open up in the KMS console. So in the console, if you scroll down, there's an option where you can add another AWS account. So with this, um, I'll enter the ID of my account, added my target account, and save the changes. So now, uh, if you see here, we are sharing our KMS key that we use to encrypt our database to the target account. The next step is to share the Aurora cluster with the target account. Now, you can either share the source Aurora cluster or you can create a clone of your Aurora cluster and then share the clone. To create a clone, 
you select your Aurora cluster, go to the Actions menu and then hit Create Clone button. For this demo, we will share the Source Aurora cluster with the target account. Next, we will switch to AWS RAM console and then create a resource share. So in the AWS RAM console, we will hit the button Create Resource Share and then put in all the details to create our resource share. EPG test share is the name and then we will select the resource type and we have an option to select the Aurora DB clusters here. So you get the information about the DB clusters available in your account. We'll select the EBG test DB cluster that we want to share with the target account. And then we will uh, accept all the defaults. We'll go to the next and then we will put in the details of the AWS account that we want to share our Aurora cluster with. Next, we will review all the information and then we will create a resource share. So resource share is successfully created. So we'll go to shared by me resource share and then we will see APG test share in there. Next, we will switch to our target account here and then we'll go to the AWS Resource Access Manager. We'll see we have one pending invitation um, under Shared With Me and we'll go to the resource share there. We'll go to the ABG Test Share resource and then we will accept the resource sharing. Next, we will switch to the RDS console and we will see the Aurora cluster that's shared from our source account is listed here. So we won't be able to access the source cluster from our target account and we will see the only action we could perform on this cluster is the create clone. So we'll go ahead and create a clone of this cluster. We'll put the database name here. And then select the instance type and then um, we will take the default web VPC and the default subnet group and then we'll select the security group. Now also put the database name, accept all the defaults, enable the encryption with the default KMS key. And then we'll go ahead and create a clone. So this clone is going to take a couple of minutes to get created. So my Aurora clone is created now and it took about 10 to 12 minutes for this clone to be available. Now let's go ahead and do a quick test in our clone cluster. We will add a new column to a table on our clone cluster and then we will verify that we do not see the same column in the source database. Now, I have two Linux clients here that I will use to connect to my Aurora clusters. So on the left hand side, I'm connecting to the source Aurora cluster and then look at the tables that we have. Look at the definition of the categories table. And on the right hand side, I'll connect to the clone cluster that we just created. As we see here right now, the categories table have four columns. So we'll go ahead and add a column to this table on the clone cluster. So we added the column category code and then next I'll go ahead and verify the table definition. 
So we see here we have a column category code on the clone cluster. And then if we verify this on the source cluster, so we don't see the column in the source cluster. So with this, I complete demonstration of one of the use case where you can create a fast clone of your production database in a separate account, test the schema changes, and then measure the impact of those changes. Next, let's move to the next section and talk about some of the limitations with the Aurora cloning. So you can't create a clone in a different AWS region than your source Aurora cluster. So if your source database is in US East 1, the clone has to be in the same region. And you can create a clone based on another clone, but the total number of clones that you can have based on one source cluster is limited to 15. Next, when you share your uh, encrypted database with another AWS account, you also have to share the encryption keys like we saw in the demo. So there's a limitation that if your database is encrypted with a default encryption key, you cannot share it with another AWS account. So it is recommended to not use default encryption keys if you plan to use cross-account cloning. Also, you can not create an unencrypted clone from your source database that is encrypted. You can use a different encryption key, but the clone has to be encrypted. Another limitation is that you can not share your clones further to another AWS account that is shared with you. And last, you can't rename the source DB clusters that you are sharing cross account. To summarize the session, we talked about Amazon Aurora fast cloning feature and the use cases that it provides. So if you're using multiple AWS accounts today, you can use this feature to meet your requirements like cross account database refreshes or testing schema changes or limiting access to your production database accounts. Thank you for stopping by and spending time with us today to learn about Amazon Aurora database fast cloning feature. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your AWS teams. Thank you and have a great day.